Hello, good day. I am Amy Zakaria, the resource person for the principles of assessment and evaluation, one of the courses offered at the Faculty of Education at YTM. So, my dear beloved students, I hope you are in the best of health, in the best, in, with the best mindset, with the best motivation to get me through this semester, you and me both in one piece. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the different item types. Uh, just to give an essence of what we are doing this week. So yesterday we looked at um, test items, <clears throat> sorry, test types. Uh, and today we're going to delve into item types. And tomorrow we will be looking at stimuli and item construction. So basically what we are doing this week is the first phase um, in item construction process. So we are going to get our feet wet and construct items next week. So before we begin, <clears throat> Just to let you know that I'm slightly under the weather. Uh, I'm having a runny nose at the moment. I'm trying very best to conceal <laughs> this runny nose thingy. Uh, also slightly coughing, but it's not related to the pandemic. Uh, this is me being me in the morning. And um, the slides which I'm using today, uh, basically the one that you are accessible to on my mood page, and this one is entitled um, item types. So in this video lesson, I'm going to be breaking this into two, into two sections. Uh, section one or part one is on objective item and part two on subjective items. Just bear with me. My, my voice is hardly coming out. Uh, I'm trying my best here. <clears throat> All right. So without further ado, let's get to the main business of today. So in this world, in this universe, in educational assessments, there are basically only two types of item. An item could either be objective or subjective. So at this moment, there is no third type. So only two. Just remember that. So this is an example of an item, which I'm sure you are very familiar with the format. Um, multiple choice, of course. So this is not an example of an effective item, but well, just for fun to get our engine running. So before we delve further, what exactly is an item? We have discussed this in class before. So item is um, basically test questions. So they are questions for written tests or written examinations, and they are called items. If you have other assessments, such as a portfolio, presentations, uh, observation, these are called tasks. But questions for written tests and written examinations are specifically called items. Right? <clears throat> so let's do a bit of brainstorming. Can you think of examples of objective type items? Let's start with the most obvious one, multiple choice. This is the one that you are basically most um, exposed to. True and false. Uh, now, true and false basically is the same, under the same category with questions uh, such as agree, disagree, uh, yes or no. So basically those dichotomous items that has 50% chances of getting the answer right. Moving on, fill in the blank and close passage. So these two are basically similar. Uh, the only difference is in the length of the actual sentence or passage. So basically, fill in the blank um, are questions which in a sentence you take out one or two words from a sentence. But with closed passage, you take out about three to five words from one whole paragraph. So just remember that fill in the blank is for one sentence usually and closed passage using the same format as fill in the blank but for one paragraph or maybe one whole article with four to five paragraphs. So close passage is common for language tests. <clears throat> Labeling, uh, matching, underlining. We also have coloring, which is also objective, very cute. Um, completion, ranking, and sequencing. I feel like there's more, but for now, these are the most common ones. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at um, examples of items. So these are like five examples of multiple choice items. 
Uh, these are for language tags, um, measuring article, underlining. So this is fill in the blank and completion. Now, this may look a bit uh, foreign to you, but basically completion item is common in listening tests where you listen to a conversation or a recording and fill up a section in the test. So they are usually completion um, format of questions. <clears throat> Let's take a deep breath because I need that. <sighs> okay. Let's move on to the second part. So we have to look at uh, several types of objective item. Uh, now, coming on to the most important question, uh, the overarching principles. You have to use the words. All right, so what is exactly objective item called objective item? What exactly is objective? Now, if we were to look at the list of, sorry, a list of uh, these objective questions, you can see that regardless of the item types, they all share very dominant characteristic, which is for all these items, they only have one potential correct answer. So that is number one characteristic for objective item, only one potential answer. So when you, if you are an assessor and if you mark um, an assessment with all objective questions, you have high level of objectivity because you are confident that the student is either right or wrong with almost no judgment on the part of assessor. So with objective item, because of the um, presence of only one correct answer, you know whether the students have gotten the question right or wrong. So the concept of judgment in educational assessment is always associated with item types either the question being objective and subjective. So with objective questions, there is almost no room of judgment. Hence, you are always confident. Hence, the assessor is always objective uh, in his own capacity of the consistency of the assessor's marking. So this is just something I take up from a search engine demonstrating the definitions of the word objective. So let's move on looking at the advantages and disadvantages of objective item types. Now, if you were to look here, we have the word perceived. Okay, so uh, these are common as common kaho. These are common assumptions about objective item. They may be true, but some of them are just perception that people believe what objective items are. So number one, this is the main reason why teachers in the world love objective items, because of the ease of scoring. So grading or scoring objective questions are relatively quickly, uh, stress-free, and you can do it efficiently as well. So imagine if you were to mark essay questions, it would be horrendous, especially if you have like five classes to mark, it will be time consuming. But with objective questions, regardless of how many students you have, the marking process can be done fairly quickly. So this is one of the main advantage of, of objective question. For objective uh, questions such as multiple choice, where you use OMR, paper, uh, it can even be scored by machine. So it's very effective and efficient in a sense. And number two, uh, because of the cost effectiveness, um, you only need a piece of paper where students can answer up to 80 questions, multiple choice wise, and also it can be scored by machine, hence it is very cost efficient. It is not as um, <clears throat> expensive in comparison to assessments such as observation or simulation. So these are expensive. So with objective items, it reduces uh, the cost by a mile. So it is also one of the reasons why the administrator of assessments love objective questions. And number three, its ability to assess large number of candidates. Um, this is, of uh, course, it's true when it comes to standardized large scale assessment. Just imagine the assessment that we have in Malaysia, standardized assessments such as SPM, um, UPSR, so they do have objective questions, 
because with objective questions, you can ask so many things and it can be answered within such a short time. And also because it only requires a piece of uh, a set of question paper and also just a piece of uh, answer sheet. So it's very, very economical and it can be used to assess mountains and mountains of candidates at one point in time. All right, and finally, is it the final one? Just to see. Okay, number four, we have more. Uh, appearance of objectivity. Okay, so please be mindful of the word appearance here because uh, these are common assumptions. So with objective item, because there's only one potential correct answer uh, and there is all, almost no judgment is involved most of the time. Uh, hence, it is very difficult for any assessor to be biased. Uh, we will talk about this in detail while we discuss about subjective items. So as I said, uh, with large skill assessment, it is favorable uh, by most administrators of assessments around the world, not because it's uh, economical, it is cost effective, but because it is also easy to administer and carry out. So the whole uh, past administration process is, can be fairly done effectively and efficiently. And number six, allows multiple ways to assess underpinning knowledge and understanding. Uh, there are various of objective item types. Uh, if you remember, I showed you earlier in one of the slides. So you can assess knowledge and understanding using various number of item types. So this is it's very interesting in that sense. And finally, with objective items, uh, you can basically determine the validity and reliability of each of these items. We will cover this in more detail in item analysis towards the end of this semester. So basically, we can measure uh, how reliable are our items by calculating index. So it's quite fun. <laughs> Though I know that most of you are scared of this. The moment I mentioned calculation of the involved, like, what? But it's just a simple calculation, but it is very worthy. Uh, process to do because it does show how good are your items. Okay, so basically these are the advantages of objective items. All right, so let's look at now the disadvantages of objective questions. So basically only three. Well, this is very quickly. Okay, um, the, one of the most um, I guess common uh, perceptions or uh, disadvantage of objective questions uh, is the fact that it is limited to assessing knowledge and understanding. So we will be looking at Bloom's taxonomy uh, next week. But when we say knowledge and understanding, these are lowest uh, cognitive processes, lower level thinking skills, and uh, basically when you ask or develop questions for your assessment, you do want to assess more of the middle and high order thinking skills. So even though objective questions can be used to measure higher order thinking skills, most of the questions that teachers develop end up assessing these two lower skills, knowledge and comprehension. And also because of its um, difficulty to be used to measure higher order thinking skills, it appears as if Objective questions have um, low face validity. And number three, even though I said that most of the time when teachers develop objective questions, they assess low order thinking skills, it is possible to develop objective questions that assess um, analysis or evaluation or even create, but it is very, very difficult to come up with. So writing objective questions are difficult when it comes to writing effective ones. And if you want to write effective multiple choice questions, for example, it does require experience and knowledge in item writing. So not many people have that. So we end up having um, an ocean of objective questions, but they usually assess only lower order thinking skills. 
So that's it. So basically, that's wrap up today's session. That's nice. So before we um, finish with this video, let's look at the takeaways uh, or the key points that we can take from this particular session. Uh, so basically, we have looked at the different um, objective item types, and we've looked at the role of these questions and also getting a bit of understanding about the perceived advantages and disadvantages. So my final word before I end this video, I'm going to meet you again in the second session of the same title. But for now, I pray that all of us are blessed with the greatest of health, and may you and me both have the most productive way ahead. Thank you and good day.